So today I'm going to do a colour palette using the Van Dyke Brown. Um, one of my subscribers, Cindy, hi Cindy, said, what kind of colour palette can I use for the Van Dyke Brown? So I was thinking about all different kind of tones and I did write on my uh, channel some, some considerations and some options. And I've been thinking about this more and this is the colour palette that I've come up with uh, for today's piece. So I've done a bit of a tester board just to see what the colours look like when they're dry. Um, so let me run through those colours now. So for our taser, I'm using the Pearl Deep Brown. Now this is going to be one uh, section of the base coat. Um, I'm doing a Chaos Dutch Pour. So I'm going to use that as, as a block colour. And then we have the uh, the Van Dyke Brown. And as you can see, it dries to the darker colour. This is Van Dyke and this is the Pearl Deep Brown. So I think those two, co the contrast in those two browns is, is, is a good one. I think it's going to work. And then I've gone for kind of two green colours. I've gone for the Pearl Sage Green by Arteza and the Pearl Pastel Green by Arteza. And then I'm hoping to add a bit of extra colour using the System 3 acrylic, the um, the rich, rich gold hue colour. So all of these are slightly thicker than what I'd use for a Dutch pour. I'm just trying a very a slightly uh, thicker consistency to see what kind of results that I get. So let's see what we can create. OK, so today I am using a... 24 by 12 inch canvas. I have already painted the sides and I've painted the sides in the pearl deep brown colour um, because I want full side coverage and when I'm blowing the paints over I'm just going to let it all drip down the edges. I will take the drips off the edge because we know that can pull the design off the canvas um, and it's going to be a very simple simple finished piece like that. So I'm interested to see how this works out. Let's go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have this section as a block color. I'm going to do all the other colours in this section, which is the chaos part, and then I'm going to blow the colours into each other and uh, see what we can create. Okay, so I'm just going to do the uh, the chaos section of the Dutch pour. And what I mean by that is I'm just going to randomly layer the paints straight onto the base of the canvas um, in a random order using the colour palette that I've already designed. Um, I'm just going to blow all those paints into one. You'll see the effect shortly. So I have sped up the camera so you don't have to sit there for too long to see how I'm just layering the paints. As I said, it is random. But what I do make sure is that opaque colours are not going to be um, on top of semi-opaque or transparent colours because there, there'd be no point in that. So I'm just going to blow uh, all the colours into one. Cindy suggested that I do the browns. So if you've got any other suggestions, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And maybe I can do a colour palette that you suggest.
I really do love using the uh, the blow dryer to create my pieces and as someone uh, said to me recently it's like it's your paintbrush and you've got good control over it but that's because I do have quite a thin nozzle on the end and I use always use it on the cool setting um, but this this consistency here is thicker so I do have a lot more control over it than a, a traditional Dutch pour consistency. So you'll see here, I'm starting to blow those colors over the brown block color at the top. Um, I'm not seeing too many cells, but again, I think that's because of the consistency of my paint. It's a lot thicker, uh, but that's okay. You know, I don't need to have cells in all, all the pieces that I design. And some people don't even like the cells or the lacing. So what I would suggest is using that thick consistency. If you're wanting to do a Dutch pour or a Dutch pour technique, to have slightly thicker consistency so you don't necessarily get those cells appearing in those pieces. So when I'm looking at this colour palette as I'm as I'm blowing this out, it almost reminds me of Halloween or an autumnal kind of feel. Even coffee and chocolate to indulgences that I maybe have too much of. Um, what does it say to you? When you look at this colour palette yourself, does it trigger any nice memories or what kind of what, what kind of things do you think of when you see this colour palette? I'd love to hear what you think. Okay, I'm done. I really do like this. So I've got a few air bubbles, so I will blow those out shortly. Uh, but yeah, it's good. I'm not working in triple speed. I have sped up the camera at this point. Um, but when you're using a flame, obviously, please do take care. And here, I'm just checking that I don't have any puddles of paint. I want to make sure the consistency is good. Okay, so here is the wet version from my view. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this. And I think for this one, because I always used to shy away from using browns, it was good for me to do a tester board just to see what all the colours that I've chosen for that palette would look like. And I'm really happy with the chaos part of the Dutch pour. I think those colours have really worked well together. I'll, uh, I'll show you the dried version now. we go so I wanted to try and show you in the best light possible because the way that I've used that gold it really shines and shimmers on that canvas and it's dried beautifully actually there's so much detail in there when you have a closer look and those colors really really do work well together so I highly recommend using some browns and maybe some of those uh, the greens to complement that as well and obviously the, the gorgeous gold so here is the fully dried version um, in a bit of slower time so you can have a look. Thanks so much for joining me today and take care of yourself. See you soon.